Father, we thank you for the workers' training tonight. Thank you for the faithfulness of your children. Thank you, Lord, for the way people, your people, are serving you. We're asking that none of us will lose our rewards in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you speak to every heart tonight. And your spirit will apply the word to every heart. We'll be doers of the word. And the blessings for doers of the word will be on everyone without exception in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to Psalm 25. The book of Psalms. Psalm 25. Verses 1 through to 5. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, not just my voice, my soul. The depths, from the depths of the heart, we cry, we call unto the Lord. Verse 2, O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea. Let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed that transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Let's come back to verse 3. A. Let none that wait on thee be ashamed. As you wait on the Lord, you will not be ashamed. Verse 5. Let lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Verse 21. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. I wait on thee. And then in verse 22, redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. You will see in the verses we have read that the psalmist is concerned about, number one, himself. Because he says, let me not be ashamed. It's not only concerned for himself, it's concerned for the nation. As he ends the prayer, he says in verse 22, redeem Israel. That was his nation, O God, from all his troubles. That nation had troubles at the time of David. And now as David prayed for himself, he also prayed for the nation. When we pray, we're not praying for only temporal blessings. We're praying for eternal blessings. We're not only praying for something natural, something physical. We're praying for something spiritual and something eternal too. And we're not praying only for ourselves. Of course, we pray for ourselves. We also pray for our families. We pray for the church of the living God. And we pray for the nation that the Lord will end all the troubles of our nation as we look at uh, this passage on waiting on the lord you see that the psalmist also has a lot to say in other verses of of other chapters concerning waiting on the lord we're looking at psalm 27 psalm 27 i'm reading from verse 13 I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. I, I say, wait on the Lord. You see, again here, it's talking on waiting on the Lord. And it says, as I look at the land, and as I look at the things happening around me, as I look at the land, in this own case, the land of Israel, in our own case, we look at the land, our nation. And wherever you are, you're living in a nation, and you belong to a nation. You look around, it says, if I didn't hope in God, if I didn't believe in God, with all I see, with all I hear, I would have fainted. It says, but the solution comes as we wait upon the Lord. That's why now he calls us to solve the problems in the land. 
and wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart wait I say on the Lord the Lord is going to answer our prayers our prayers for ourselves our prayers for our families our prayers for the church our prayers for our nation Psalm 37 I'm reading from verse 7 Psalm 37 verse 7 rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him you look around you and there are things to cause anxiety there are things to cause restlessness there are things to cause worry and there are things to cause panic there are things that give us depression restlessness in our heart as we look around us but now it says rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him fret not thyself because of him that prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass as you look around you and as you see what people do and how people live you can see the things they bring to pass the wicked ways but not verse 8 cease from anger and forsake cross Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, you see that while the evil people are doing their evil, and while evil doers are perpetrating uh, uh, terrible things in the land, we should not envy them, we should not copy them, and we should not emulate them. But we wait on the Lord because those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit, tell me, I can't hear you, the earth. It says, as we wait upon the Lord, everything we need for sustainers here on earth it will grant unto us in jesus name we're looking at verse 34 it says wage on the lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit heaven to inherit eternal life tell me now the land is talking about earthly blessings all the earthly blessings we need to sustain us and to maintain our lives here on earth whatever the economy whatever the situation and whatever all the people are passing through it will supply your need look at that verse again wage on the lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land when the wicked are cut up thou shalt see it you remain alive I said you remain alive it will not cut you off in Jesus name tonight we're examining the Word of God on the subject waiting on the Lord for our eternal destiny waiting on the Lord for our eternal destiny think about that our eternal destiny that brings in a salvation that brings in a sanctification that brings in a happy life here on earth that brings in the opportunity and the freedom to worship if there is no peace in the land how are we going to worship if there is confusion and violence are we going to worship that's why we're not only pray for our salvation already we're saved we're not only praying for the salvation of other people already we're praying for that making intercession but if there's no peace in the land you cannot even go out and evangelize if there's no peace in the land you cannot have an open air crusade if there's no peace in the land you cannot have everything you ought to have even for you to prepare for eternity that's why everything is connected together as we talk as we think about our eternal destiny and uh, that's why we want to look at what the scripture has to say on uh, the exchange and on the ramifications of waiting on the Lord the three things we're looking at number one waiting on the Lord a necessity for Christians waiting on the Lord a necessity for Christians you come back to Psalm 25 
In Psalm 25, you'll see this believer, this child of God, making up his mind and putting it on paper, on record. I am going to wait on the Lord. In verse 3, 25, verse 3. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. It says, let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. And then in verse 5, it says, let me, lead me in thy truth. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait. There are needs in my life. On thee do I wait. There are things I don't understand. And things I cannot unravel. And there are knots I cannot unloose. Because of that, I wait on thee. On thee do I wait all the day. If you are very observant, and you're very thoughtful you think about your life and you think about areas you cannot understand areas you feel why is this like that i'm saved i'm a child of god i'm sanctified and i'm living a righteous life by the grace of god and yet i can't understand this i can't understand that that's why you wait on the lord it's a necessity and sometimes it's in your relationships your wife uh, claims to be saved and you claim to be saved and thank God you are saved. Your wife is sanctified and you are sanctified. Praise the Lord for sanctification. And yet two sanctified people cannot always be in agreement. I say this is the way and she says this is the way. Why don't we have unity? Why don't we have the kind of love and the kind of unity between the Father and the Son that Jesus prayed for in our personal lives and in our families? We need, we're wondering, why is this like that? Why is this like that? That's why we wait on the Lord. That's why it says in Psalm 27, verse 13, I advented unless I believed uh, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We go to our places of work and then we do our very best and we're serving uh, the very best we know how. And yet there are challenges and difficulties and the people that are not uh, doing as much as we are doing, they're getting on and they're getting on very well. And then we look at this, we say, this I cannot understand. I would have fainted. I would have been totally discouraged. I might even have given up everything I'm doing except that I'm hoping in the Lord. And I want to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It says, here is the answer. Here is the answer. When there's confusion, here is the answer. When there's conflict, here is the answer. When you cannot understand why things are the way they are, solution will come. I said solution will come. It says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Getting weak, wait on the Lord. Getting discouraged, wait on the Lord. You're shedding tears in secret, wait on the Lord. There are questions unanswered in your heart, wait on the Lord. And this is not what we're looking for. You have thought, when I get saved, when I get sanctified, when I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and when I am walking right according to the Word of God, no curse, no issues, no difficulties, no pressure. I'm being at my best every time and everywhere. And yet things are happening. I don't even have the courage now to be who I ought to be. I don't have the strength of mind to be what I ought to be. You know the answer? Wait on the Lord. Things will change. Things will turn around. He says, and I say, wait on the Lord. You are going to wait. Anything you have lost, the Lord will return everything back to you in Jesus' name. Waiting on the Lord in necessity for Christians. Psalm 81. In Psalm 81, reading from verse 1. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. Here is the psalmist and he knew if God will come into my situation, everything will turn around. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Have you ever come to, have you ever come to such a situation like that? You are overwhelmed with challenges. They're coming from left, right, 
front, back, and center. It's like as you're trying to understand this, another one comes. As you're trying to unravel this, another one comes. But he says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He will do that. He'll lift you higher. And he'll lead you to the rock that is higher than you are in Jesus' name. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Come to Psalm 82. 62. Psalm 62. Reading from verse 1. Truly. Certainly. With all the things surrounding me. I know that this is the only thing you do truly. My soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation, my deliverance, my happiness, my miracle, my solution, my breakthrough. Truly, I've discovered that this is the solution. I've, I've been, you may be in the past, you run here, you run there, you were looking for solution, but no solution came. You contacted this and contacted that, and no solution came. You complained and complained and complained, but no answer came. But now you understand the solution is nearer than your thought. You wait on the Lord, your problems are going to be solved. Is going to deliver you. It will set you free. Waiting on the Lord is a necessity for Christians. Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only, he only, no one else, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and I shall not be greatly moved. You will not be moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. It's not talking of you. It's just so imagine evil against you. You will look for them. You will not find them. As a boiling wall, as a burning wall, shall ye be, and as a total fence, they only consult to cast down from his excellency the delight in lies, the bless with their mouth. But because inwardly, have you come across a sort of people in your life that though they look friendly openly and they bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse, inwardly they're negative, inwardly it's like the man, the woman shall fall, inwardly it's like something evil will happen to him. They bless with their mouth and it says, But they curse inwardly. But what's the answer? Are you going to, you know, play the same game with them and also smile with them and hit them in your heart and bless them but then curse them inwardly? That's playing the same game with the unbeliever and then you become an unbeliever. What's the solution? Look at the solution in verse 5. My soul, tell me there, which thou only upon God. That's the only thing to do and then for my expectation is from him your expectation is from him he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense i shall not be moved i shall not be moved somebody there i shall not be moved enemies will not shift you for your place of duty they will not shake you and they will not push you down you'll keep on standing how do you get the strength to keep on standing in the midst of all those dangers and difficulties? Wait on the Lord. In God is my salvation, verse 7, and my glory, my rock, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him. How many times? Trust in Him. How often? Trust in Him. When? At all times. Your problems are solved. Have faith in God. Depend on God. Look at the promises of God. It's a necessity that you'll take time out. And you will wait upon the Lord. Trust in Him at all times. See people pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Pour out your heart before the Lord. And then you're going to find conditions are going to change. 
situations in your life they are going to change families they are going to change provision breakthrough everything will come for you in jesus name i come to isaiah chapter 40 isaiah chapter 40 i'm reading from verse 28 as thou not known do you know by experience do you know by waiting upon the lord have you seen situations change have you got personal miracles that it is not because you know somebody prayed and the church prayed but you by yourself have you known as thou not known as thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary and there is no unsearching of his understanding he giveth power to the faith he giveth power to the faith those who have been powerless and then uh, they're murmuring and they're complaining and it's because uh, the church did not do this for me and the leaders did not pay attention to me you know wait upon the lord all those problems will be surprised they will be solved even from tonight in jesus name he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might he increases strength i can see your strength increasing your power increasing your courage increasing your stamina increasing your backbone is getting stronger your heart is getting stronger the weak uh, the amen is weak it says in verse 30, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, tell me, verse 30, one but, who is this talking about? I said, who is this talking about? I'm going to ask you a simple question with a difficult answer. The simple question from the beginning of this year have you waited even for a day on the lord what that means is have you prayed have you fasted have you said this challenge i'm taking it to the lord i'm going to stop murmuring i'm going to stop complaining and i'm going to stop blaming other people i'm going to stop pointing or accusing finger to anybody i know that my the solution is in my hand between me and god and between my knees and the throne of heaven a change will come the question is have you realized that have you waited upon the lord have you spent just one day I about one day in a month I about three days in a month that you are waiting upon the Lord and you say my strength will be renewed amen my courage will come back amen my backbone will be strong amen you will do it I said you will do it why because for start one day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, tell me, and not be weary. They shall walk, tell me, and they shall not faint. It will be fulfilled in your life. Uh, look at Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Uh, you need to understand something here about yourself. You need to understand something here about workers and leaders in deeper life bible church you need to understand something here about the average member of deep and life bible church mark chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 30 mark chapter 6 reading from verse 30 and the apostles gathered themselves together unto jesus the apostles gathered themselves together unto jesus and they told him all things both what they had done and what they had taught what they had done what they had taught if you look at our church those two things are a kind of very important we teach and we do we teach and we do what they had done what they had thought we are church a church of activities a church that is occupied while it's in the work of the lord and we're busy on this day we're busy on that day we're busy on that day but look at verse 31 and he said unto them come ye yourselves apart 
into a desert place and rest a while and rest a while you see there are people who are on duty every time there are people who are always active always active in the meeting outside the meeting at the central church in the district church at the central church in the church in the group at the central church and everywhere in the land and we're very very busy and sometimes we're so busy that even when the meetings are going on and and it's good you're vigilant it's good you're doing your work but the point is the message is lost on you you don't have the time to take it in and the time to meditate and the time to pray it through and after the message we are in a hurry to jump to another activity after the meeting we want to go for another meeting let's say for example we come on sunday after we have done the sunday scripture even during the sunday scripture some people are busy necessarily and it's important and then during the service they're busy necessarily they don't have the time to take in everything we're hearing immediately after that church service there's another meeting on that side another meeting on that side and jesus said my disciples you need to wait on the lord you need to come apart before you are torn apart it says come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while look at this verse 31 for there were many coming and going and they had no leisure no time no free period so much as to eat and we can say that about some of our people we don't have enough time to pray we don't have enough time to meditate we don't have enough time to wait on the lord we're so very active good activity righteous activity necessary activity indispensable activity but then we're not very thoughtful about it we're not planning about it everything that has been preached is not soaking and sinking in because we do not have the time to come apart and to pray and to wait upon the lord we'll wait upon the lord i said we'll wait upon the lord let the church give me a good assuring amen. amen acts of the apostles i'm reading from chapter one acts of the apostles chapter one and i'm reading here from verse four and being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father wait for the promise of the father there are many people that are too conscious people are dying of course we know people are perishing of course we know but if you're not strong if you don't have any backbone if you don't have conviction if you don't have the power if you don't have the knowledge and the vision to help the people even if you are jumping out and doing this and doing this and doing it everywhere and you are not strong in the inner man what can you do that's why jesus said yes people are perishing and many souls are dying every second and every minute and they're dying every day and every week in the thousands in their millions and yet being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith ye ye have heard of me verse 14 verse 14 these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication in response to what jesus has said they continued in prayer and supplication with the women and mary the mother of jesus and his brethren and his brethren what happens when we're not waiting upon the lord we're very active and we're here we're there we're you know almost everywhere and we have our hands on every handle and we have our mind our heart on every area of the world and we're very active and that's good that's good but then we're missing out in our own personal spiritual lives and it says wait wait upon the lord songs of solomon i'm reading from chapter one songs of solomon reading from chapter one verse six 
Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 6. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun has looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me. My mother's children were angry with me. What did they do in, that, in their anger? What did they do to show that they were not happy with me? They made me the keeper of the vineyards in the plural. But my own vineyard singular have I not kept. You see, there are people who are overloaded with activities. And we uh, count that as love. You know, the uh, leader loves me so much. He knows I'm very busy. And he knows that I'm occupied to the neck, to the throat. And it's like I'm drowned, I'm drowning in, a, in activity. But you know, the leader cannot think of any other person that he wants to give activity to. And then he, put, he brings another one, and brings another one, and brings another one. And I think that is good. They trust me so much that they put a lot in my hands. Although when you are a man of many trades, a jack, jack of all trades, you will be master of none. You will not do anyone to perfection because you are busy here, you are busy here, you are busy there. Apart from that, it affects your own spiritual life. It affects your own dedication to the Lord and your readiness and fitness for heaven. And so this uh, a lady said, look not upon me. I am black. I shall be white. I am black. I show a fear in color by a complexion. I am black because the sun has looked upon me. I'm always outside. Always outside. I'm always doing this and doing this and doing that. And my mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of many vineyards. The work that should have been distributed among all of them. They hid everything on him. And he says, but the sorrow is now my own vineyard have I not kept. Taking care of other families, your own family have you not kept. Helping other people, encouraging other people, counseling other people, preaching to other people, seeking other people's souls and salvation. But the salvation of your own family, your own children, you have not looked into. They made me a keeper of vineyards and my own have I not kept. For Samuel chapter 1. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 1, we're looking at verse 9. It says in verse 9, So Anna rose up after they had eaten a Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the, of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. Uh, the situation here is all of them have come to worship. The Osma was there, uh, Penina, the other woman was there. But Anna knew the sorrow of her own heart. Anna knew the, the, the kind of a storm within her own family. And she said, yes, we have all worship. And she was a preferred woman. She was a loved woman. And the husband even said, Am I not better to you than ten children, ten sons? But she knew the ache and the agony and the bitterness of her own soul. And so she waited upon the Lord. When you think about your life, the needs in your life, your own spiritual life, and your own family, and your own strength that is uh, going down. And you know your level, and you know that you should be stronger than this, and you are not happy with yourself. What do you do? You wait on the Lord. And she vowed a vow while waiting upon the Lord, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, the affliction of thine handmaid, the husband did not have that kind of affliction because uh, the husband has uh, other children from the other woman and that other woman did not have uh, this kind of affliction. She was having this peculiar problem. Have you noticed that although you are in the midst of the crowd, although you are other people say brother, brother, sister, sister, their problems are not like yours. 
your problem is not like theirs. Although you are not talking about the problem, you are not talking about your concern, you know the deep concern that you have. Wait on the Lord. And there you will find she this a woman, Anna, and she said, Forget me not, forget not thine handmaid. But if thou wilt give unto thine handmaid a child, a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying, waiting upon the Lord, before the Lord, uh, it says that Eli marched her mouth. Now Anna, she spake in her heart, only her leaves moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been uh, drunken. As a wait on the Lord, the people that will have their own interpretation, because they have always known you to be active, active, active. They have always known you to be busy, busy, busy. They have always found you. They are always at your post, always at your post. But you know that you are dying at your post. And you know that you are fainting at your post. You know that you are not as prayerful today as at your post as you were prayerful before. You know that the problems you could handle in your personal life, in your family, in the past, you can't handle them now. Even though you are busier today than you you were last year that you were five years ago every little thing that comes now you respond with anger every little thing that comes now you respond with frustration everything that comes now you respond with bitterness as if the busier you are the more busy you are the more kind of a uh, temper uh, temp temper that you have and and you know your problem what are you to do do like this Anna and wait upon the Lord. Eli misunderstood her and she thought she was a drunk. Eli said unto her in verse 14, How long would I be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Anna answered and said, No, my Lord. You know, the average person, if you are not waiting upon the Lord, already you have a problem, barren. Already you have a problem. Penina, the second woman that your husband has gone to marry because there's no child, is having children and is teasing you and taunting you and torturing you. And now you come to the house of God and Eli, the priest, mistakenly now said, you are drunk. Already you are frustrated. Already you are bitter. Already the pressure is too much on you. If you are not careful, you will reply that man of God in a harsh way, in a bitter way, because you are not waiting upon the Lord. You lose your temper easily. You lose your mind. You lose your focus. You lose your vision. You lose quite a lot. But the woman did not lose her temper. She said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not than handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for our, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. I say to you tonight, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grants thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. The Lord grants your petition tonight. And she said, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. No bitterness. You see, like that said, you are drunk. You see, like that said, put your wine away from you. Uh, she didn't slander Eli. She didn't get angry against Eli. She didn't disbelieve Eli. When you wait on the Lord, your temper will change. Your attitude will change. Your response to situations will change. If you don't wait on the Lord, we'll see the bitterness there. We'll see the anger there. A little sin will push you down. A little sin will disorganize you. And you'll say things you ought not to say. But you know, she was waiting on the Lord. And she said, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and what? 
tell me did eat and her countenance was no more such a prayer had been answered i said your prayer will be answered and so we find waiting upon the lord has a great great value and as we wait the lord himself will grant us our petition in jesus name point number two now waiting on the lord like Nineveh with conviction waiting on the Lord like Nineveh with conviction if you're waiting on the Lord there must be conviction you must know that something is going to come out of this maybe things are bad and things are going from bad to worse and yet you need to wait on the Lord and you need to pray let's come to Jonah Jonah we're reading from chapter 1 Jonah chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 4 Jonah chapter 1 verse 4 though Jonah chapter 1 verse 4 it says but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the, the sheep was like to be broken the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea the lord was trying to catch their attention he wanted them to also catch the attention of jonah god was looking for jonah he knew where he was but jonah was not paying attention and to catch his attention he sent a storm a wind into the sea so that there was a mighty tempest there are times uh, you know some things are sent in our lives to catch our attention there's trouble here there's tempest there there's trial there there's tribulation there there's temptation there everything is just coming from every direction and then we'll say the witches are at work there's no witch here and sometimes we'll say paths of darkness at work paths of darkness are not in this verse and sometimes we'll say the wicked people this is what they are doing i know what they're doing they have sent this they have said that there's nothing like that here it is the lord trying to catch the attention of jonah and trying to catch the attention of all the people there you see because of what they are preaching over there and over there everything that happens happens it's like it's like uh, you know the witches are the ones doing that everything that happens is the curse everything that happens is the you know generational curse of all the forefathers this is what is playing on me now not at all sometimes god is trying to catch your attention and he allows the storm and he allows the trouble look at verse 5 then the mariners were afraid and they cried everyone unto his god and cast forth the wares that were in the sheep in the sea into the sea to lighten each of them there are times that we ourselves begin to sell our properties because there's a problem and to solve this problem we get rid of this we sell this one we sell this one and we cast out our own property by ourselves but we're not praying we're not waiting on the lord we're not seeking the face of the lord and you can cast away all your property like that because of that storm and because of that difficulty it says but jonah was gone down into the sides of the sheep and he lay and was fast asleep fast asleep well we're losing everything we've got everything we labored for we're casting away we're selling land we're selling houses and we're selling important equipments in our houses because of the trouble we must pay for this and pay for that and pay for that while we're doing all that we never thought of praying we never thought of waiting upon the lord so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him what meanest thou O sleeper arise call upon thy god wait on the lord open your heart to the lord pour out your heart unto god and if so that he that if so be that god will think upon us 
that will perish not waiting upon the lord will save the lives of many people that are connected with you so they're waiting upon the lord will save a lot of property we might have thrown away into the sea you know the story eventually he said i'm not ready to wait on the lord and you are in trouble I can't call upon the Lord and you're in trouble and it's because of me all this is upon you God has called me to be a missionary but I want to be a millionaire that's the problem that's the reason why all this trouble is coming upon you and coming upon me and it says that God has called me to be a preacher but I don't want to do that the place of preaching I don't want that I can't do that and I'm fighting with God and he's fighting against me and have I happen to be in your boat throw me into the sea and then he tried so they would not throw him into the sea uh, there was no answer eventually they prayed unto God don't count us guilty for the blood of this man and eventually they threw him what's the story a whale caught up with him and swallowed him at this time now he had no choice no activity it was all alone he waited upon the lord in the whale's belly and he began he couldn't see any other thing only praying and praying and praying and telling the lord i know i'm guilty i know i'm wrong i know i didn't follow the vow of the prophet now i call upon you and the lord answered the prayer look at chapter 3 verse chapter 3 verse 10 and god saw uh, chapter chapter 2 verse 10 and the lord spake unto the fish and it vomited jonah upon dry land when you pray miracles will begin i said miracles will begin now chapter 3 verse 1 and the word of the lord came to jonah the second time saying arise go unto nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that i bid thee so jonah arose and went unto nineveh according to the word of the lord now nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey and jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown what did Nineveh do they had conviction what did Nineveh do they have faith in God Nineveh will be overthrown what do we do you had a dream that calamity was coming upon you upon your family upon a loved one and when you woke up you couldn't forget the dream it was like i'm afraid something might happen i'm afraid how could i have this i've never had a bad dream like this you know for many years i remember another year many years ago and i had a dream like this and this is what happened and now i have this dream and then you just say oh lord i hope uh, this dream is uh, just nightmare i hope this dream means uh, nothing and then you go your way they never did not do that they had conviction and they waited upon the lord a lot of calamities a lot of dangers will a uh, kind of uh, pass away if you will wait upon the lord with conviction look at verse 5 so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on some clothes from the greatest of them to the least of them but for the word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes and he caused it to be proclaimed and to be published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles and saying let neither man nor beast hurt nor flock taste anything let them not feed nor drink water but let man and beast be covered or sack clothes and cry mightily unto god that's waiting upon the lord leave every other thing food water whatever it is your pleasure 
the violence of your hand, your mistakes, your faults, your sins, your transgression, everything together, leave everything, repent, turn. And he says ye, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hand. Who can tell? If God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger, that he that we perish not waiting upon the Lord. Nineveh with conviction waited upon the Lord. And then it says, and God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said, that he had said, that he would do unto them. And he did it not, waiting on the Lord like Nineveh, but doing it with conviction. Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. I'm reading here from verse 5. Joshua chapter 7. We're reading from verse 5. There are things, uh, some calamities come, uh, you cannot understand. How could it be like that? Here is the promise the Lord has given me. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. I can't see that promise being fulfilled. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. I can't see that promise being fulfilled. And then we're we'll just okay, uh, God will do it at his own time wait on the lord and take that problem to the lord and say lord why this why this because this is what you had promised with conviction you go to the lord and you wait upon the lord we're looking at joshua chapter 7 and verse 5 and the men of Ai smote them about 30 uh, smote of them about 30 and six men for they chased them from uh, before the gate, even to Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people, of the children of Israel, melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes, and he fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord, until the even tide fasting for one day until the evening and then it says and he and the elders of Israel and they put dust upon their heads and Joshua said alas O Lord God wherefore as thou art all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us would God, would to God, we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say? When Israel turneth their backs before their enemies, for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth and what will thou do to thy great name he was waiting upon the lord when calamities strike when disasters come and when uh, unexpected dangers when the reality takes place we don't just say okay the lord will change things at his own time God is there, his promises will not fail. He must remember what he promised us and everything will be all right. And then we we'll begin to encourage each other without prayer. Don't worry, brother, everything will be all right. Don't worry, sister, everything will be all right. No, Joshua did not do that. They waited upon the Lord, verse 10, and the Lord said unto Joshua. It was a response to waiting on the Lord that the Lord now spoke to Joshua get thee up wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which i commanded them for they have even taken of their cursed thing and have also stolen and assembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff therefore Therefore, therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. In spite of all the promises that I've given, 
they cannot stand in spite of the fact i say sanctify yourself for tomorrow god will do wonders among you they could not stand in, in, in spite of their self-confidence let just send three thousand people there it's a little city we shall overcome in spite of all that confidence they could not stand but they turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed neither will i be with you anymore what if they went on without waiting upon the lord what if they went on without asking the lord oh lord why what should this happen unto us and the lord had already decided in the courts of heaven i will not be with you anymore except she destroy the accursed sin from among you ah sanctify the people and say sanctify yourselves against tomorrow for thus says the lord god of israel there is an accursed sin in the midst of thee, O Israel, thou canst not stand. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed sin from among you. It was because they waited on the Lord that that's why the answer eventually came. Our answer will come my answer will come the answer for our church will come as we wait upon the lord god is going to turn things around he will do it in jesus name we're coming to psalm 33 psalm 33 i'm reading from verse 16 psalm 33 and we're reading from verse 16 waiting on the lord like nineveh with conviction in psalm 33 reading from verse 16 psalm 33 verse 16 it says there is no king saved but the multitude of an host a mighty man is not delivered by much strength and horse is a vain sin for safety neither shall he deliver any by his great strength behold the eye of the lord is upon them that fear him upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine verse 20 our soul waits for the lord knowing that all the powers that be cannot help us horses cannot help us armies cannot help us and whatever it is men are depending on cannot help because of that our soul waited for the lord for he is our help and our shield he will be your help psalm 40 i'm reading from verses 1 and 2 psalm 40 verses 1 and 2 i waited patiently for the lord that's the answer i waited patiently for the lord there's a solution if you will take time apart and you have to make up your mind you have to say this particular day or this particular week at this particular time i'm going to take this problem to the lord it will be a concentrated time a consecrated time and a concrete time of praying and waiting upon the lord and presenting definite requests before the lord i waited patiently for the lord and he climbed unto me and he heard my cry he heard my cry as i waited upon the lord he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. He will do it. Psalm 65, 62, I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 62, and we're reading from verse 5. 62, reading from verse 5. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Look at how much time you're spent. I go to uncle. He'll bail me out of this. He has all that it takes to get me out of this. You go to uncle. Uncle said, I'm having a great challenge that you know makes it impossible for me to help you at this time. Okay, I'm going to write to so-and-so. 
I know he will heal. And then you write to so and so, and you replied, I really wanted to, but you know, I'm going through some challenges myself. All right, I'm going to go to the banks that lent money. And then you go to the banks that lent money, and they say, Yes, we're willing to lend you whatever you whatever amount you want. But the point is, uh, you're going to have collateral, and this is going to stand, and this is going to stand. Then after that, our this is not the regular bank. Our charge interest is fifty percent, and then you'll be paying this way and this way, and you're going to spend years before you even pay the interest before you start paying the loan. Eventually, you realize, why well, am I running elter skelter? And then I'm not getting any help. I come back to the Lord. The Lord will solve your problem. I said the Lord will solve your problem. You've been looking up to so and so and such and such, but there's no solution. It says in verse 5, my soul, which thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Your expectation is from him. Your expectation will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. You will not be ashamed. In God is my deliverance. In God is my salvation. In God is my breakthrough and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times. At a time of death, trust in Him. At a time you cannot make ends meet, trust in Him. At a time when it appears your whole world is turned upside down, trust in Him. At the time it appears your sun has gone down and your moon is not shining. Everywhere is dark. You can see through the darkness and it will help you. I said it will help you. Trust in Him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before Him. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. He'll be your refuge in Jesus' name. Psalm 123, Psalm 123. In Psalm 123, I'm reading from verse 1 unto thee, unto thee, unto thee, lift up lift I up mine eyes O thou that dwellest in the heavens behold as the eyes of servants look up unto the hand of their masters and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God the same way that those uh, maids are looking up to their master, their mistress, in the same way we're looking and waiting upon the Lord our God until, until, until that he hath mercy on us. You waited on the Lord the other week. You waited on the Lord the other month. But the problem you, are, or you wanted to solve, as it be solved, if it's not so yet, wait still upon the Lord until that He has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with contempt of the proud. Wait on the Lord solution is fast coming and your solution will definitely come in jesus name point number three now point number one waiting on the lord in necessity for christians number two waiting on the lord like nineveh with conviction number three waiting on the lord for nations for nations by the church Waiting on the Lord for nations by the church. The church has the answer. The church has the solution for our nation here 
will wait on the Lord. And then all those who are hearing in your own nation, you wait on the Lord for your nation. And then in the whole of the continent of Africa, the church is waiting on the Lord here. The church is waiting on the Lord here. The church is waiting on the Lord in that other place for all the nations. And the church is doing it continually. And the church is doing it with faith in God. Answer is going to come. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. I'm reading in from Bastachi. Ezekiel chapter 22. And we're reading from Bastachi. This is what the Lord is expecting for the land. What the Lord is expecting for every nation. It says in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, I sought for a man among them among them among them if you are a nigerian the lord is looking for a man a woman a church a denomination among them he's looking for the church among them if you are a ghanaian the, the lord is looking for a man a woman a church among them ghanaians if you are if you belong to another country the lord is looking for a man a woman the church in that country has sought for a man among them that shall make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it there are people who say who claim to be christians they're not standing in the gap for the land they're not standing in the gap for the nation they think that if we are concerned about the nation they think uh, we're becoming political they say that what's our, what's our problem what are you what are you thinking about praying for the nation what what's the emphasis about about the land about the nation about the country we are saved and we're going to heaven yes we're going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature if they are being killed and if violence is sending them to uh, untimely eternity through untimely death and we're not doing anything and we just say well since we're saved and sanctified and filled with the holy ghost and we are on our way to heaven is that not enough it says no it's not enough i sought for a man among them a woman among them a group of concerned intercessors among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the nation that i should not destroy it but i found none they're not concerned about the country i found none they're not concerned about the people that are dying prematurely i find none he has found you he has found me he has found our church we will pray for this land and prayer will change things in our land in jesus name any amen coming from you jeremiah jeremiah chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 1 jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1 run ye to and fro through the streets of jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if ye can find a man if there be any that executes judgment that seeketh the truth and i will pardon each it says uh, jerusalem the city things were so bad that calamity was going to come destruction was going to come judgment was going to come and then the lord said run to and fro and find somebody who is concerned about that city and then uh, i'm going to pardon that city the lord is saying seek for people in this country in that country if there are people who are so concerned and they are praying for this land god is going to bless nigeria god is going to bless the nations of africa look at chapter 29 jeremiah 29 i'm reading from verse 7 jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7 and seek the peace of the city whither i have called a caused you to be carried away captive seek the peace of the country 
seek the peace of the city here for example if you take uh, our city lagos for example where we have the headquarters church there are many of us who are living here in this city but this is not our city of birth we are not we are not born here we came from different parts of this country we came from almost all the all the all the states in the country and we're here in lagos and the peace of lagos and the prosperity of lagos and the security of lagos and the goodness of lagos should be a concern because even though we're not born here this is where we have a livelihood this is where we have a ministry this is where we have everything the lord has given us to do and this is the city that has uh, put uh, you know bread in our mouth and put shelter on our on, on our head and even this is the city that has given us the job that now we have to go and build in a various places that's why it says seek the peace and the prosperity and the unity and the security of that city whither i have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the lord for it wait on the lord for that city wait on the lord for this country and pray for it for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace amen in the prosperity thereof shall ye have prosperity in the security thereof shall ye have security in the progress thereof shall ye have progress that's why we're praying that's why we're praying for this city for this country for this nation and for every nation in the continent of africa and even beyond look at verse 12 verse 12 of that same chapter 29 then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and i will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and ye shall find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart that's the intercession he wants us to make look at nehemiah chapter one nehemiah chapter one i'm reading from verse one nehemiah chapter one waiting on the lord for nations by the church in nehemiah chapter one i'm reading here from verse one the words of nehemiah the son of Achaliah, and it came to pass in the month of chislew in the in the 12th year in the 12th year uh, as i was in shushan the palace that ananiah one of my brethren came and he and certain men of judah and i asked them concerning the jews that were escaped i asked them i was interested i questioned them what's happening to them you should question people what's happening to them young people what's happening to them and the school leavers what's happening to them and the parents what's happening to them owners of business what's happening to them industries what's happening to them our land what's happening it's not just that i leave my house i come to church from church i go back to the house i don't look at anything i don't see anything i don't hear any information i'm not concerned about anything happening around me i asked them and i asked them concerning the jews that had escaped which were led of the captivity and concerning jerusalem and he said unto me the remnant that had left of the captivity there in the province and in great affliction and reproach and the wall of jerusalem also is broken down security is compromised and then the gates thereof are burnt with fire there's reproach everywhere and it came to pass when I had these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. I wept, I mourned certain days, I fasted waiting on the Lord and prayed before God, the God of heaven. And that's how he eventually was sent to build the broken walls of that land. I pray that the broken walls of our nation will be built in Jesus' name. Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. In Esther chapter 4 verse 1, when Mordecai perceived 
all that was done. Mordecai wrenched his clothes and he put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and he cried with a, with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came that's the decree to destroy the decree to kill the decree to exterminate the children the jews the children of israel there was a great mourning among the jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes eventually the information the news got to esther in the palace and now in verse 13 there mordecai commanded to answer esther think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the jews for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time can that be can there be people while the whole church is gathering together and we're praying for the nation and we're saying let there be peace in this nation let the killing stop let the violence stop let the famine stop let the unemployment that is taking over the whole land let it be arrested let the young people find something to do let prosperity come to a nation and let a peace come to a nation all this tearing apart and all the hate trade and everything bitterness in the land let it stop can there be people that will hold their peace and say well when they talk about a personal breakthrough i'll come and get involved when they talk about uh, you know me me alone getting to heaven then i will get involved but while they're talking about praying for the nation and praying for the nations of the continent uh, i'm not interested it says in verse 14 if thou all together holdest thy peace at this time at this important time then shall enlargement and deliverance arise to the jews from another place i pray i pray god will not replace you no other person will take your place we are to pray we are to bring down peace prosperity and breakthrough on the land the lord is depending upon us it shall be done in jesus name but if you hold your peace, deliverance, enlargement will arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shalt be, uh, shalt be, tell me there, destroyed. And who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther bid them return Mordecai this answer, go gathered together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me wait on the Lord wait on the Lord wait on the Lord and neither eat nor drink three days night and day I also and my maidens will fast likewise we will wait upon the Lord I also anybody there I also, anybody there? I also, anybody there? I also, and my maidens will fast likewise. So will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. You will not perish. I said you will not perish. I said you will not perish. Our nation will not perish. Our nation will not disintegrate. Our nation will not break up. Our nation will not continue to suffer. The answer came. The answer is coming. I said the answer is coming. Esther chapter 10. Esther chapter 10. Verse 1. And the king Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea and all the acts of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai whereunto the king advanced him I did not retain in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia so 
Mordecai the Jew was next unto the king Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace unto all his seed that time has come peace to everyone prosperity for everyone progress in our land security in our land god will use you where are you god will use us i say where are you we will pray and god will answer we will intercede and god will spare our nation from trouble in jesus name waiting upon the lord for nations by the church are we ready let's start tonight waiting upon the lord let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer this is for our eternal destiny and this is for the destiny of many people in the land and of our nation is the necessity wait upon the lord do it like never with conviction wait upon the lord do it for this nation and do it with real commitment wait upon the lord